All right. Okay, it says we are live. I have adjusted some settings. So typically I stream at 1080-60 at a 4K bit or 4,096K bit rate. Um, but because Comcast doesn't know how to run a freaking internet connection, my upload speed right now is one fourth of what it should be. Um, we typically get 40 megs up. We're getting 10. Um, and I'm still seeing drop frames, which is just disgusting. Um, ah, am I seriously going to have to drop the bit rate again? Let me, let me try this here. Like, of course, like Comcast, seriously, get your act together, man. I really hate to drop the quality down, but. Let me see if this is going to, I don't know if it's going to change my bit rate instantaneously. Because we're getting about 10% drop frames here, which is really bad. So I just reset the stream. Our bit rate's a little lower here. All right. All right, so this might have to be how it is. I probably don't look as smooth and whatnot as I do. Um, I already lowered the frame rate. We're at 30 right now. This main camera here is a 60. Um, which is the whole point I, why I got it, but we're, we're at 30 right now. But we're not dropping any frames now because we're staying in the, in the range of what this real crap internet connection is actually going to be able to do. So it wasn't actually OBS this time. Um... Let me fix my chat window here. Because my chat window kind of just went. Is asking what encoder. Uh, I think so my brother who's in the chat, I'm using the NVENC encoder. I'm not using the software encoder. If that's what you're asking, I'm using my 1080 Ti's hardware encoder, and that's about the only fun thing it gets to do because I don't have time to play video games anymore. As sad as that is. All right, so we got our chat back. All right, so this is what we're going to have to live with. Um, we can't get PC Master Race quality up in here because uh, Comcast doesn't know how to run a freaking internet connection. So thank you, Comcast. You're Comcastic. And by that, I mean you guys suck. Literally suck. Um, I'm only getting like 1% drop frames, so this is going to have to do... I can always re-upload the stream. Um, yeah, Tor, I wouldn't have been able to play PUBG on this connection, so... Yep. Uh, not like it would have mattered because uh, I'm not going to be able to do much of anything. Like uh, YouTube is telling me my stream health is poor. Says viewers may be experiencing minor issues. So anyways, um, this is what it is. If for some reason the stream drops out, um then that's what it is. I don't really think my alternative is having like my phone be an access point and I can stream through my phone. Um, just for, you know, shits and giggles here. I'm not even going to pretend like I'm not going to get demonetized. Um, let me just run a quick test here because I do have a Wi-Fi card hooked up to my um, my computer here. <laughs> Matt, your message got flagged because you swore. How dare you? 
Um, let me see what my speed on my cell phone is, which is on Verizon's network. Um, I do have unlimited data, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm getting about, eh, it's not too shabby. Let's see what the upload, that's what I care about is the upload here. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think, I think maybe I should try it. What do you guys think? Should I try this? <laughs> I'm thinking maybe I should just try the, um, I know I have a Wi-Fi, I do, I got a Wi-Fi card here. Aha! Alright, this is gonna be jank as, jank as shit. Alright, hang on, let me get this connected to my phone and I'll kill my wired network connection. Oh, okay. I can't believe Alright. Let's see here. Let's pop on my mobile hotspot and put this on the charger. I can find the charger. Got people spamming dongle. All right. Let's see here. All right. Hotspot is on. Cool. All right. Let's see, uh, let's see what she does. Do I see it here? Uh, hack spot, there we go. All right, let's see if OBS automatically connects to this. Um, I'm going to go to my network center here and disable my wired. We're disabling right... Okay, we are on the, all right, we are on the hotspot. All right. All right, OBS is happy. It's showing me a green light. I think we're back at 60 frames per second. How are we looking, guys? How are we looking? All right, we are on the mobile hotspot. We are connected to my cell phone for internet because Comcast doesn't know how to run a freaking network. All right, so are we, are we good with this? Everybody happy? Says I'm broadcasting in uh, glorious 1080p 60. All right, how are we looking, guys? Come on, come on. <laughs> this stream should have started 30 minutes ago. This delay has been brought to you by Comcast, where you don't have any other internet provider choices. So go screw yourself because you have no other options, really. My other option is my cell phone, or I can pay AT&T for 25 megs down and four whole megs up, and it costs almost the same as this Comcast line. Yay, America! And our crap internet choices. So... Anyways, uh, sounds like somebody wants my, my wood printer in here. Um, is is it buffering? Are we uh, are we are we not doing any better now? Uh, buffering like crazy. Come on, Verizon, you are my only hope. No, it's saying it was on there. No, it's showing red over here now. I've got full signal here. I've got great signal. Okay, so I'm just going to kill myself now. How's that? <laughs> All right. I see drop frames 58%. 
Um, honestly, guys, I may have to reschedule this, and I'm gonna get off the. F Actually, I, let me. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna call the. F like this is not gonna be a review. This is gonna be. Uh, let's see how Tim uh, deals with Comcast. How's that? Let's see. I'm not saying it's not. Let's see here. The stream looks just fine. I have the numbers of your street address as 10740, apartment 305. Is this the account you're calling about? Yes. Fake typing by a virtual computer. That's legitimate. Sorry. In a few words, tell me how I can help you today. Your internet sucks. <laughs> can you guys hear this? Which are you calling about? Slow internet, connection issues, Wi-Fi password, or email trouble? <laughs> connection issues. Let's try to resolve your problem by sending a reset. Are you ready for me to reset your modem? My... Hey, yeah, so... You had to think about that? You didn't know what it was called? Sorry. To send that signal, press 1. If there's an issue, press 2. Um, 2. <laughs> I'm going to go on the hotspots because it's going to reset my modem. Oh. Agent. Sorry, was that agent or main menu? Agent. Before we get you to an agent, we'll need to authenticate your account. Stay or enter the We're going to mute this. Would you be willing to participate in a survey after speaking to an agent? Please no. Say yes or no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me transfer you to a Comcast to agent for assistance. Dear God. For quality and training purposes, your call may be monitored or recorded. <laughs> Did you mute the mic? <laughs> Comcast, this is Sean. Hey, Sean, uh, this is Tim Hoagland. Um, I'm calling because I'm having a lot of issues with my internet connection here. I've already power cycled all my equipment here, the router, um, the modem and everything. Um, we had an issue like this about, I want to say, two months ago. Basically, our download speeds are fine. Um, the upload speeds are severely limited. Um, I'm barely getting 10, megab 10 megabits a second. Um, and I'm actually trying to do a video live stream right now for my company on our YouTube channel and I can't do it because your internet connection isn't working correctly. All right, well, I, I, I'm sorry to hear that you are having issues with the internet connection. I know that's frustrating. Uh, I can certainly look at that with you. So before we get started, I just need to verify the account first. Um, the, the name and, and the address on the account, please. Uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, it's Timothy. Last name is Hoagland. H O O G L A N D. The address. Six O four five three. All right, thank you. And uh, is this the best number to reach you in, in case we're connected? Yes, it uh, is. Seven zero eight two two zero four. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. one's correct. And uh, do you have either either the account number, the last four digits of the payment method on file, or the last four digits of the social security? I, 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 so what's the point of the automated system if I've already done all that? Do they just not give it to you? I mean, I literally entered in all that information already. Uh, we, we do have some of the, the information, but, you know, usually after a, uh, after a transfer, we just verify the information again. Okay, sure. well, the last...
All right, so uh, just to make sure I heard you clearly, you mentioned that you were having issues with the, that the download speeds were fine. But the down, the upload, yeah, and this had, yeah, this happened, I, I want to say two months ago, whatever the last trouble ticket, um, they sent a couple of guys out and ended up being something at the node. Um, but I mean, the, the connection is pretty much unusable because I can't, I can't use my upload. It's, it's, it's literally at one fourth of what it is normally. Um, I do video content on YouTube. Like right now I'm supposed to be doing a review on a, on a, a 3d printer right now, but I can't because your guys' internet service isn't working correctly. So it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's it's dropping a lot of packets, and I just I just can't I can't catch them all. Now, Mr. Hoogwin, do you have a uh, a gateway that you're leasing through us, or is this? No, I have I have my own modem. I actually have I actually have. Um, another modem too that we can try, but the modem I have is a brand new modem. Um, I still have the, uh, the Cisco modem that was previously on the account. Oh, okay. Well, the, the reason I was asking, you know, not because there was an issue with the modem, just to let you know that, um, uh, you know, due to the tools that we, that we use, we're unable to, uh, support custom owned equipment. Uh, what I can do is just make sure that the uh, signal as far as those yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Sure I'm not asking you to. Order. I'm not asking you to support customer-owned equipment. I'm asking you guys to provide service that works. Right. Yeah. I'll uh, look into that as well. But as far as troubleshooting the. Yeah. Do you know uh, who Peter North is? is? I'm kind of limited. So the quality, as far as the signal quality, I can I can uh, make sure that that's working properly. Yeah, I mean, I can I can check my uh, I can check my modem too to see. I mean, there's nothing against using our own equipment. We have a right to do that. Oh, not at all. I was just um, I just wanted to let you know. And like I said, I do have if you, if you do suspect it is the modem, I do have a completely different modem that I know works. I upgraded to a new Doxis 3.0 modem just to get some more channels that I can bond on. Um, so that's uh that's what I upgrade to, but I still have the old one here. So if you would like to me to switch to a completely different modem, I can do that. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it shouldn't be necessary, but um, that, that is good to know. All right. So let me just see if we can now. Now, um, you mentioned the upload speed are are like a a quarter of what they should be. Did, yeah, did I'm. Run a, a speed test recently. Like, what were the downloads? And, yeah, so my down. Uh, yeah, so my download speeds were 340 megabits per second, and the upload speed was around eight to nine, t sometimes ten. Typically, we get around 35 to 40, and we pay for 30 plus. So I'm not. I'm not even getting a third of what we pay for. And uh, you, you also mentioned that was a, a tech uh, that came out not too long ago that, that, um, that there was an issue with the the node. Yeah, they that was a couple months ago. So likely not an issue now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I can't okay. use my my I can't use my internet line for what I need to do. And uh, Mr. Hoogland, how, how do you connect to the to your modem mainly? Like, is that the Ethernet connection, or is it a, yeah, the Wi-Fi? Yeah, the computer's the computer I'm on is uh, completely hardwired. It's hardwired. Okay. Do you happen to know if we can actually get business class at this address? Because we are actually a registered business. Um, I believe so. Now, to get a, you know, get you a definite answer, what I can do, uh, the best thing to do is would be.
be to have you speak with someone from our, you know, uh, business class department. Um, it would be, you know, better suited to answer any questions you might have as far as service or if we're able to, to get ser provide service to you. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, um, it's definitely not an issue with the equipment here. I mean, it's it's a super hard connection going to everything right now. Um, my computer is really hardwired in here. And, uh, you know, also with that business class, as far as the support, I know, I know there's a little bit uh, faster. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm aware. Support. I've I've been in the IT field for over 10 years now, so I'm I'm familiar with that. And uh, honestly, it might be better for us to just because we, we run a home based business. So this is actually if this proceeds into tomorrow, this is actually going to affect uh, our business because literally everything we do is online. Oh, I, I understand. Check the, um... Yeah, and my my I mean every like the call dropped. Call disconnected. Look at that. It disconnected. You got to be kidding me. Is there phone service run by them too? I completely dropped the bit rate in the frames right now, so we we should be okay. I'm not doing the review tonight. We I'm not gonna do this on this connection. Um, so I mean, if you guys want to bullshit and whatnot, we can do that. Um, I'm really sorry to disappoint you. I'm really sorry that Comcast, you know, despite all the money that we pay them, uh, regardless if, uh, regardless if we have a business class or not, I pay $145 a month for this line just for internet. Um, it better fucking work. I don't care. I'm going to swear now, just if anybody's wondering, cause this video is probably not going to stay up or I don't really care if it gets monetized. Um, I mean, I can show you guys what's in the box. Um, actually, uh, oh, here, here he is. This is Tim. Hi, this is Sean calling from Comcast. About your next uh, This call is being recorded and monitored for quality purposes. Yeah, this it's it's being monitored and recorded on my end too. All right, I was just uh, calling you back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah i mean there's no wi-fi involved in here this is a hardwired desktop i mean it's it's so hardwired that if i were to take the cable out i would be the king of england <laughs> seriously hello so I just go to the, the, uh, the list of troubleshoot steps. Um, the Ethernet cable, is that relatively new? Oh, okay. The Ethernet cable is in there so good that if I pulled it out, I would be the king of England. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, I, I'm actually an IT professional. I've been I've been in IT for ten years. I have probably more network equipment here than most small businesses have, and it's all high end equipment. Now, um, I, you know, just as part of the troubleshooting, you know, I, I do have to go down the list. So I right. Want to, 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 you know, down. Right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Trust me. The last thing I want to do at eleven fifty one on a Thursday night when I should be working on a video is calling Comcast technical support. If there was like, I don't call you guys just to to talk. I call you guys because I know there's an issue. I don't want to bother you. I don't like being bothered if there's not an actual problem with something I'm responsible for. So, um, I wouldn't be calling you guys if I if I had any doubt that it was anything on my end. So, um, the modem is connected directly to a computer. And that computer is not getting a consistent connection, especially on the upload. So, like, I, I don't know what, what else. Like, if you look at the modem, the MAC address is literally a computer. You made the support guy die. <laughs> 
Uh, I muted the mic for a sec. He actually laughed. That was great. I heard him start to laugh. He didn't know what to do or say. Um, I know it's late, but is there is there a supervisor that I can talk to? I'm just trying to get this resolved in a timely manner. Nothing against you. Uh, I mean, if you, if you would like to text come out, like a bit. Well, I, I don't think I don't think it's going to be something in our building, to be honest, because the last three times I've had text out, it was always something outside. So um, and the thing is, I don't think this issue is going to be called in on much because your average residential user is not going to notice that their upload is severely severed, severed in terms of speed. Do you know what I mean? Right. So the only reason I'm well, the, I mean, the only reason I'm noticing it is because I actually fully utilize my upload speed on my connection, whereas most people are just streaming Netflix. So, I, 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 um, you know, it, the issue is you know they they don't know what to do. I mean, you can send you can send someone out here tomorrow, tomorrow, anytime. I I. I probably will have plenty of free time because if my internet's not working, I won't be getting much work done. So I'll I'll have all the time in the world if someone wants to come out tomorrow. Yeah, just let me know because if honestly, if I can't if I can't work, I might just go schedule a massage or something. It's like literally everything. Our bit, we, our business phone lines run through the internet connection. Um, all our shipping labels, our order management, everything. So if I don't have, you know, if I don't have working internet connection, I literally can't do anything. Well, I mean, I, 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 I understand that. All right, so if we can uh, solve this for you. Um, can you speak up a little bit? Okay. Sorry, you're just really quiet. Sure, I'm sorry. It's okay. Are you using a mechanical keyboard? Um, well, it's not fully mechanical. I know it's loud enough to be one, but... <laughs> Uh, actually, it's not, it's not a full mechanical. Gotcha. So are you actually at like a Comcast service center or are you like work from home kind of deal? Um, I'm, I'm actually at the uh, Buffalo. Oh, okay. Now, is, is this the best contact number for you? Yes, um, it is. The number, okay. And this would be the number the tech calls to Yes, that's that's fine. This is my cell phone I'm talking okay. to you on. I mean, if you really want to annoy your coworkers, go pick up a mechanical keyboard with uh, these. It, the, it'll say cherry blue switches. They're very clicky. I, I have read about those. <laughs> uh, I was wondering about like how how loud they are oh they're pretty loud but they 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 feel great when you're typing on them um right i mean if i got one my wife would probably kill me hearing it but it's it's just so satisfying <laughs> right <laughs> but and, and yeah it, they're great i am i'm a i am past due for an upgrade now uh, i did open the scheduler we have a the first opening we have is friday uh, I guess that would be today. And we have a, a three to five. That's the soonest uh, one. And a five to seven. Um, actually, yeah, that's that's the first appointment that we have available. So tomorrow, today. three to five. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever the soonest. I mean, if they can come earlier, like I said, just have them call me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, submit that for you. Now, uh, just to let you know, um, you know, someone 18 years of age or older needs to be home during the visit. Uh, if you have any pets or small animals, just make sure they're secured. And uh, do you have any special instructions for the tech? Like, uh, do you need a, uh, is there a gate code required or anything to get to the table? Yeah, he can buzz our door. It's uh, pound 305. 
that'll ring our door. And I'm just checking, is that 3 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 3 p.m. to 5 p.m.? Uh, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to double check. Oh, sure, no problem. And you said that uh, that was pound 305? That's correct. That'll buzz our door. Okay. I just want to know, what are you wearing just, right uh, now? Add that to Now, uh, uh, Mr. Hoogland, if you need to cancel or reschedule that appointment for any reason, you can do that using the My Account app. Um, you can also call uh, if you make that change. Yeah, just make sure make sure then the uh, the service guy's got all his tools and stuff. Uh, actually, last time the guy forgot his uh, uh, coaxial, the, the scope thing that he plugs in to actually take the readings and everything. Uh, that's actually our main tool. Yeah, he, he said he couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that was the first guy that came out. Um, but like I said, it wasn't even an issue in our um, in our actual, like, building or whatever. Right, oh, okay. All right, so I, I did update, update the update the Gate code. And um, I have a ticket number for you. Uh, one last thing, and this is just a record of your call today. Okay. If you're ready to note that down, just, just let me know. Yeah, go ahead. All right. And that number is uh, C, as in Charlie, R, as in Romeo, 785-131-838. Okay. All right, Mr. Hoogley, so hopefully we get a... Uh, get a take out there to track down an issue for you, get your upload speeds where it should be. Now, uh, did you have any other questions for me? Or is there anything else I can uh, assist you with this evening? Um, I was just wondering, boxers or briefs? Boxers. I'm My sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Sean, it was, right? Right. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you setting up the call. Hopefully, they'll be able to figure it out. So, um, yeah, I think that'll, that'll do it. Um, hopefully they can get this resolved quickly and, uh, you have a good night. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Thank you. You too as well. Um, thank you for choosing Comcast. Enjoy the rest of the evening. All right. You too, man. Take it easy. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Please make this, uh, <laughs> you have to save this and put it as a private video. <laughs> <laughs> The boxers, hell yeah, damn right, boxers. How's the stream? I mean, it's showing green, but it's probably potato vision mm. at this point. I mean, it randomly buffers. Um, cause I'm broadcasting at like 1k or 1024k a second at uh 30, so it's it's like we're it's like we're playing on the Xbox right now. Um, <laughs> I'm saying it looks finer now. I got that guy was a trooper though. <laughs> Uh, stream is actually pretty yeah, good I, <laughs> it's not bad yeah you know i can see the chat right yeah. there right <laughs> if, if i pulled my ethernet cable out i would be king arthur <laughs> oh my god <laughs> should we just like make a thing like just uh should we just call a bunch of places should we try calling china or something <laughs> Should we call Creality and say, someone said Creality posted a uh, video on their ABL kit. I'm curious to see how bad this is. Let me see here. Um, uh, do, 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 Creality, YouTube, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> Cruelty YouTube? No, that's, uh, that's definitely not it, Google. So, um, just to give you guys an update on, since this is just kind of going to be a, um, whatever stream because Comcast can't provide me with good internet, apparently go figure. Um, so I bought a kit direct from Creality on AliExpress. Um, I'm gonna go grab it. there was, n uh, I I don't, it's at. it doesn't matter. I've already shown it on the stream. Anyways, that one was in terrible f physical condition. The printed case was terrible. Um, the soldering was bad. Um, I haven't gotten install guide from 
the Creality Direct on AliExpress. I have not got anything from them. However, I purchased the same kit on Amazon through the CC Tree reseller, and they actually provided me, um, they actually provided me a, now this is the, no, this is the one from, this is the one from Amazon. It's the same, same kit. It's just the quality on the case is a little better. That's really the only difference. Um, I'm trying to find, oh, here we go. Creality 3D's YouTube. So, let's see here. We're going to go, we're definitely thumbs downing that. Let's let's see what this is. It's gonna fill their ears. Man. This is some hype music. Mounting sensor support, let's see. Oh, there's no talking. I'm a little disappointed. Oh, wow, I can read things now? Hell yeah. Oh, man, as I'm zooming in on the chat, it's uh, screwing with the other one. That's pretty crooked. So do they only have the ACPC? They yeah. don't have direct wire? Yeah, they only have a, a knockoff of the Easy Connect right now. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay, so, um, how are you supposed to actually do everything? Um, zero comments. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here, let's see. How flattering that you loved the Easy ABL original hit so much that you copied our the, uh, the I mean, implementation of it. Oh, Thanks. <laughs> you never forget the smiley face. There we go. <laughs> oh, hang on. Let's do this. Uh... If you want to support the original... I G O I I can't spell. Yeah, this keyboard's terrible to type on. Let's see. There we go. Actually, uh, I think I'm going to move this down. There we go. So this was kind of cool. Let me let me add my camera here. Uh, video source. Right there. Uh, oh. 
I can't. I can't down read. One, down one. It's so small go, in this go, 4K go down, monitor. Go down, go down. Right there. Oh, video capture device. There, there we go. 4K. <laughs> Dear God. All right. Yeah, let's let's do this here. We'll put us down in the corner here. So yeah, this was. Uh, Oh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, here, I'm going to put one, pick one up from PH3D Studio. There we go. Good comment. Damn. Facebook user group, it goes right to a web, it goes right to their Facebook page. How does that make any sense? They go back? Oh, yeah, I, oh, you can't see it. I sent them a message yelling at them. Oh, this is on my, uh, hang on, let me open up my, I have like, I, I have my 3D printer profile here. I posted, probably delete this stream because I posted here. I got a private video. Be fine. No one liked it anyways, but I'm going to delete it. I might as well update this uh, stream so no one gets confused. All right, let's see. If you guys got any questions, let me know. Now's the time to ask because this is just kind of a hangout chat since um, I can't really stream at full quality. I want to have the uh, videos streamed at full quality here. Does this have multiple... Okay, I'm going to delete this one because this is uh, clearly the other one. Um, live streaming. Yeah, look at this. Look at this, this garbage. Actions, delete. Oh, just make them private. I, it, they don't need to be on the account. I don't need to make them private. Make sure you save this one. Yeah, I'm going to save this one. So. There we go. Oh, can I play an ad? Am I, are you, does that, I don't know what that does. Does it actually play an ad? It's not, it's not pulling up anything. Oh, playing ad. Okay. That's interesting. They finished, what? they finished the beer bongs and bet. Yeah, I saw the case. Haven't yet. Um, I do not vent enclosures. Um, I have HEPA filters in mine. Um, like right now, I got uh, what printers are going here? My CR10 and my Ender 2 are going. They're making parts. You can see here. Need them cases. Oh, did I? Oh, okay, I was gonna say I thought I had the camera hooked up. Pieces. There we go. Yeah, you guys know what those are. Um, the guy that was supposed to, um, there's a guy that made a new Easy ABL case, which I have the prototype floating on my desk, and he told me to contact him. It's it needs to be slightly taller, and I stink at 3D modeling, so I was gonna ask him to do it. Um, but I wanted to start shipping the new cases, but I haven't been able to get in touch with him. So I have to print the uh, the existing ones right now, which is what this one's doing and uh, what this guy's doing. This There's 44 it. on there. Oh, yeah, here it is. So apparently I do have it. Um, you guys can see this. Uh, small cam. Small cam needs to be smaller. I Basically what I did was I shrunk my uh, my, like, rendering area in uh, obs so everything is huge now until i rescale it all um and it dropped my cpus because for some reason i was rendering in 2k and then downsampling so this this works for the easy connect right now um but it does not work for the direct wire because of the 
um, the capacitor hits the lid. Uh, I think this adapter will work. Yeah, it will. So this is a mini here. Um, there's, well, I don't know if you tested this one yet, Tyler, but it does work. So um, mini sensor here. And uh, the nice thing about this case is, look at you get the status LED here. And it's got the bolts for the bolt holes for the 2020 extrusion. Um, this is the one I modified because this cutout here is for if you had the direct wire. Um, and it just snaps in. It's super nice. So uh, if I pull this out, can I get this out without? There we go. So there's no glue anymore. No more adhesives. Um, so this is just a, uh, is this a board that was botched? Yeah, this was, this is a board that was botched. The middle hole is, uh, is shot on the board. So that's why this is floating around. But anyways, um, if I put the board in, uh, up if I got it in straight. Come on. There we go. So a board goes in like that. So you got easy access to the screw terminals for the Z. Um, the screw terminals for your power. Uh, but if I go to put the lid on, which I don't know if you noticed, the lid goes on super nice. So um, I know if I had any complaints about our current cases, it would be the lid. Uh, but this goes on. Okay, but I can't close it all the way because it's, it's riding up on the on the capacitor here um push it down a little i can kind of it's it's riding up so it just needs to be a hair longer but this is a super nice design uh, i really like it uh yeah so um <laughs> midnight ninja i have 18 printers he said if i need anything printed pla let me know um yeah i've got i got Plenty of machines here. Um, these are printed in the Inland High Temp PLA uh, or PLA Pro or whatever <clears throat> they want to call it. The new one uh, that's supposedly more heat resistant. I'm getting hot, so I'm gonna turn my AC unit back on here. There we go. So, yeah, um, new case design. Um, just a few more things to finish. Um, I might be able to, the problem is I don't want to stretch this out because he's got this nice tapered edge here and it just looks so nice. It's such a nice looking design. Um, the logo is pretty easy to print too. Uh, so you can see that here. It's got the logo on the lid. Not terrible, but the thing is it slides on and off super easy. Unlike our current cases, which can get kind of stuck. Um, that's my only complaint with the existing ones so these are able to be printed with no supports which is great i can't have cases that don't have supports um, i only have the stl files right now um yeah just pla and pla plus pla plus has a little bit higher temp resistance uh that's that's about it um they should they in my experience they print the same so um this right here is printing uh a, it's like a it's an equivalent of pla plus i can't remember what company it's from um but i got a deal on it so i've been printing it um i got on amazon uh but it, it prints good um I, I have no issues with it so yeah um let me change my Yeah, I know. It, it, it's going to have an overlap there. Here, put this aside. This kit works. Yeah, I know. So, um, oh, did you just, like, pop that in there and give it to me? <laughs> um, what was I going to do? So I'm going to change my dashboard here. Let's see. Comcast sucks. There's just one I... Let me just find earlier. a Comcast sucks thumbnail and put that on this video. Right there. There we go. There's plenty of them. There's oh, no, you should go with the uh try it. Oh, they're not <laughs> sure if Comcast sucks or Comcast fucking sucks. <laughs> That's that sounds legit. We're gonna save this to my desktop here.
Sam, I can get the files from him. It's not a big deal. I just, I haven't been able to get in touch with him. Um, I'm going to bug him tomorrow. I offered to send him a bunch of free product and stuff. So it's like, I'm not just being a leech here. Um, let's see. Did it update? Your thumbnail has been updated. Let's see. Is my thumbnail updated yet? Not yet. Let me see if I open it in a... There we go. Well, you can't really see a thumbnail. It's just Fry looking shifty, <laughs> which is fine. Wah, whatever. I feel like it still fits. Yeah. So, I mean, I can show you guys a couple of things. We'll do another video on this. Um, but I just kind of quickly opened it really quick. Um, everything looks pretty good. So I was a little skeptical. We're not going to do a full review and build on this. I just want to show you some parts on it. So, like, the one gripe I have, so it's wood, but it's got a melamine coating on it, you can see here. But look at, look at my hands. Oh, no. Look at this. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's booty. So... Aside from the uh, Chinese wood cancer I'm getting right now, um, it's pretty it's pretty sturdy, um, which I had my doubts. And it does say G Tech i3 on here, um, and it's got it says push and reset, so it's nice. It's a lot nicer than I thought, and uh, it's a hundred ninety dollar printer, so. My expectations are that of a hundred and ninety dollar printer. So my I'm right around the ANET expectation. That's a hundred and ninety from Amazon. Okay. Which is why I told them, yeah, I, I want to check this out. I also have the GTEC A3 sitting in my living room. Um, which is gonna be another one, but I need working internet. So after Father's Day. Oh god, this is bad. Um, yeah, so your, your standard fare, you got some threaded rod, you got your motor couplers, you got a power plug. Um, it does have a GTEC 25, a GT2560 board, so this has got a nice board in it. Oh, yeah, look at that, busting that cherry. All right, look at this. It's an actual 2560 board, which is a Ramps Arduino combo. Um, socket and steppers. So, so far, so far, um, I, I think it's going to be a good printer in all honesty. I think it's going to be one of those where we're going to put it together and it's going to work all right, but it's got a lot of potential. So I, I'm keeping an open mind. I think it's like, it looks better in person than it does on the site, which is unusual. Uh, especially for these Chinese printers. I mean, I, I was actually kind of looking forward to reviewing this because it does look like a nice little printer. And the thing is, I don't have room for it. So Tyler was going to get sent home with this once we built it because um, he's got one printer. I bought him a brand new duplicator i3, which ironically I paid about the same for as I did this one. And this one's got a bigger build volume, volume and a heated bed. So... Uh, and this is going to be more tinker friendly. Like the i3 mini is a nice machine, but you can't really do too much with it. Okay. So, but this would be a nice platform for him to get used to tinkering with a machine. We'll put a, probably put a MOSFET on here just to, so the heated bed doesn't burn his house down, replace the power supply, and then just let him use it. So he can learn how to tinker with this stuff. Um, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll add bed leveling support for it. Um, we can definitely do it. Uh, I mean, I know you're gonna. You're already. He's he's he has never manually leveled a bed in his life. Um, because when I got him the i3 mini, we immediately put an easy ABL kit on it. So and got rid of the spring. So he doesn't know the pain of leveling a bed manually. So I might actually make him use it with manual bed leveling for a little while, just to <laughs> just to earn his stripes, you know. Uh, Matt, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, you're, uh, you're on a different time zone. Um, so have fun. Eat some good breakfast. Um. It's 4 a.m. for him. Oh, 5. 5 a.m. 
Um, I I'll be. Let me uh let me roll really quick here. Um, I'm just gonna put. I don't know. Let me let me. I'll, I'll be I'll be right back. I can use the restroom and I'm gonna get some water. So I'll be back. You guys can heckle Tyler if you want. Here I'm gonna put the chat over here, oh, so he can see it. You can heckle Tyler all you want. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go use the little boys room. So. There you go. All right, I'll be right back. Or it's gonna harass me. <laughs> I gotta use the bathroom. I gotta get some water. Do you need it? I should be. Let's hop into your chair, though. Okay. All right. First off, Tor, it's only bleaching at the moment. All right. It's only bleaching. Uh, I was supposed to get it uh, dyed silver. Is it warm? In, in the room, yes. But uh, it was supposed to be silver for the festival I went to uh, last weekend, but it is what it is. You got little boys there you keep in a room? No, there, there's no little boys there. Oh, and the chair? Yeah, it's really weird. I, I don't like sitting in another person's uh, warm seat. <laughs> what is my final form? I don't think I have one. Like, I, I understand the reference, and I'm not going to go Super Saiyan. Even though it kind of looks like I already have. Uh, Tor, uh, at some point tomorrow, are you available for PUBG? Can I feel his heat? Yes, I can. What is it like working for Tim? It's interesting. Uh, I've, it's a lot better than Walmart, that I will admit. Walmart is not the greatest. And, uh, Tor, I'll just shoot you a message on Facebook. Are you friends with Sean? <laughs> no, I'm not friends with Sean. Um, I did get a really good laugh out of, uh, the trolling that has happened this evening. Oh, and Tor? Just because I haven't been staying here late doesn't mean that the, uh, oh, he's around, is okay. Good luck with that, Sam. Letting dudes for what's better than Walmart. I mean, it, it depends what you're doing at Walmart. Um, I was doing the OPG, or yeah, OPGG program, uh, basically. Uh, I'm all the job posting in the chat, though. Oh, yeah, alright. So, to sum it up, uh, I got, uh, tonsillitis for a second time, uh, this year, within, like, two and a half months, three months. So... Uh, my friend Danny, uh, he's also in the group chat, so he's been working here, and, uh, so last week he was here all week, I was off, and now he has vacation with his family this week, so I'm here, but, uh, next weekend after, fa or, yeah, up, yeah, after this weekend after Father's Day, we're both going to be here, and we're basically knocking out kits up until the 7th, and Tor, you should try coming out here for the land, because it will be fun. Always, always is, always has been. And stream lags, I bet. Yeah, that buffer. You're knocking out kids? I'm not knocking out kids. Can I fix this to where... Oh, this is so weird. I really don't like this. Alright, I set that there. He has two of the chats open. Oh, that's weird. That's saved there. Alright, so can you put them in that room? Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to put into whatever room. Uh, 
That's not what I wanted. Eh. There we go. That's a lot better. Tim's outside making funny noises. It's a little weird. Uh, what flavor am I vaping? Um, it's wow. from Tim's previous uh, juice company. It's Decong. But now it has a different name. Do you want your seat back? The oddly one. Is it? <laughs> Hang on, I'm checking China's messaging me. Oh, from Skype? Is Tim taking a dump? No, Tim is not taking a dump. He said he had to, uh... What, what, just, what about Just me? tinkle. What about something? Michael, yeah, was t that? Yeah, I, I... Maybe I was, maybe I weren't. I mean, it wasn't even English. Yeah, I'll take my chair back. You look tiny in that chair, you know that? Because <laughs> this is like... <laughs> This is like a fat chair. Like this is like rated for four hundred pounds, which luckily I'm nowhere near that. I'm like two sixty. So um I'm over I'm half your baby. Yeah, you are. That's why you were no threat to me. Oh my god, I should have put this light in like a different position. There we go. There we go. That's that's much better. We got a new light here that's like on an arm like this. And, uh... It's yeah. in a bad spot. <laughs> I gotta reorganize it. Alright. So... I don't know, Tor, maybe, uh, maybe TH3D Santa will get you a chair for Christmas. Just, I'm just saying. This is bullshit. <laughs> Amazon drop ships. <laughs> I don't think I can carry a chair. They'll, they'll send the chair. They'll send whatever we send them. No, I sent him a refrigerator. <laughs> what? I sent Tor a refrigerator. Oh, the mini fridge? Yeah, he's got a he's got a mini fridge. A little bit bigger than the one we got. Well, I know what you should have done. You should have sent him a vinyl of what you have. Uh, disregard females acquire currency. Oh, well, I bought that on eBay a while ago, which is on my fridge still. Um, so. I'm trying to think of what other stuff we got going on here. So printers in the queue. Um, where's that little? Where's that little cylinder one? A little cylinder. The little one. cylinder one that was four around. It's so small. It's right behind you. That's a printer. This is a whole printer. <laughs> um, let me see here. Let me change the direction here. I think. Okay. Can you hear me, Tyler? Talk. Hello. Hello. Tyler. Okay. How is this now? Because uh, it's got it's got selectable options here. Um, it's full of Baja Blast, Tor. That's the only way to do it. So if it's not Baja Blast, it better be balls. This is uh, this is. Can you guys hear me? Okay, I have it. I think I have it on. There's a pattern setting on here, and it's got one that's like for interviews where. Because it's got multiple mics in here. Um, I think I have it on the right setting. So this is from a company called Zinkybot. The T came off in shipping here. Um, let's just kind of do a mini review on a mini printer. Um, so, But me personally, since the whole logo is not on there, I'm just going to take this off to give it a nice clean look here. Um, is this Omni? I have it on the option all the way to the right. It's got the two little circles. It looks like a figure eight. It's a blue Yeti, yeah? Yeah, look up the Yeti. Um, I'm assuming the circle... I'm, okay, this is omnidirectional. I think we're... Are we going to be good here? Omnidirectional is a circle, yeah. Okay, what's the other one? Bidirectional mode. All your mom's calling you? That was stereo mode, okay. Alright, so now we're in omnidirectional mode. Tyler's mom's calling. So, um, let me peel this, like, logo off here, because this is really bothering me that the whole thing's not on here. Um, you know, the JG Aurora A5 was like that. It had, uh, Hicktop's, like, silver lettering on here, and, uh, it was kind of weird. What'd your mom want? That's when I'm coming. Tyler never... You're locked in the basement. Yikes. 
All right, so I'm a little scraper to gently. There we go. Take this off. Um. So there we go. We got our spool holder here. Look at this little power adapter. It's so cute. It is 12 volts, 4 amps. Um, it feels like good quality. We'll see if it actually uh, holds up. Um, I'm assuming the power cord's in here. Yes, it is. All right. So let's do a mini review here on a mini printer. Um, these parts look to be for the spool holder. Um, you want to grab me a spool of fill? Um, give me the... Not that. That stuff is terrible. Um, go on Samantha's desk. Grab the silver spool. Samantha's desk outside? No, this one? no, give me the silver spool of PLA out there. I know that stuff prints good. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to kind of put this together. Uh, it looks really simple. You just kind of put the... This is a filament spool holder, which is kind of nice. I can, I dig it. Um, they only give you two or uh, two screws total for it. So I'm gonna put one on the far end of each. It's kind of cool. I like it. Now, is this gonna fit in there? Nope. Nope. Uh, Hang on, it's fine. Oh, okay, I gotta space it out with this. All right. Got it. All right. Okay, so that's why they only give you one screw for each, because once you space it out correctly, um, that's all you need. All right, you want to find me? Uh, let me get a hex here. The nice thing is I can pull this out of uh, I can pull this out this like segment out of the uh, video and uh, post it separately for review. Um, so the funny thing is I had reached out to Zinky Bot, which is the company who makes this, uh, when I was really small before TH. I didn't even think TH3D was a thing. I think I was still doing everything under my personal name, um, and they reached back out to me uh, to ask if I wanted to review, which I thought was kind of funny. Now they have a really large printer called the Orca 2, I believe it's called. Uh, it's like a 400 by 400 by 500. Uh, Tyler, look up the Zinkybot capsule build dimensions. X-I-N-K-E-B-O-T capsule. Um, I know it's 100 something by 100 something by 100 something. Um, so this is actually pretty sturdy put together, which is nice. I kind of dig the Tron-esque design on this. I kind of, I dig it. I, I really, I really dig it. Um, is that Resumer 3D thing by the door? What? Yeah, it is. That Resumer 3D, that little, look underneath the light switch, there's a little black box. Because I can kill two birds with one stone. We can test this printout, and we can test the Resumer 3D. Outside? No, no, right there on the shelf. See that black thing? A little black rectangle by the benchy. On the shelf, below the light switch, below the light switch, the light switch, retarded. the light switch, the light switch. I'm retarded, okay? There you go. I'm retarded. Resumer 3D. This is a prototype they sent me. Retarded. We can't do this. Uh, the... All right, build volume is 120 by 135, or 100 by 135 by 120. So I'm assuming 100 by 135 by 120. So not terrible. It's actually a bigger, slightly bigger build area than your printer you have. Yours, your little one? Yeah. Um, almost like this has a spot for, like, rubber feet, but they're not included. Um, so this is just, uh, this is a brand called Alta. That I've been playing around with. Uh, do you got a? Oh, they did give me a little. Michael, I I appreciate the uh, the correlation there. Yeah. So, 
See, I didn't want to do a full-blown preview. At least I have the local copy of this now, so I can edit it up. Um, because I can see YouTube is not happy with the stream quality right now. All right, so this holds a full-size spool. Pretty nice. Rolls fine. Um, okay. Um, and if you guys know me well, you guys know that I like little printers. Um, I've got some monster machines here. But I just really like little printers for some reason. Um, you can get this on Amazon, right? They sell these on yes. Amazon? Are they Prime? I can double check. Uh, it doesn't look like it. They're probably shipped from China, so they shipped this to me direct from China. And it got here in like three days. Yep, it's not Prime. Um... So yeah, Zinke Bot, X-I-N-K-E-B-O-T capsule. Now I can tell you first impression. So mine does have a little ding here. Um, I, I don't know if this was shipping damage or what, but it's just cosmetic. Um, but this thing weighs a lot. Like this printer weighs a good 20 pounds for this little thing. Um, it is all metal. I mean, like this is the spool. Like look, this is a nice little package. Um, so let me... Uh, Plug this in here. I've never plugged this in, so let's see. I mean, the goal of this printer is to be something that's that's easy to set up and quick. Um, it's got straight up Marlin on here. Now they have provided me the source code already. Um, here, let me uh, redo this here. Go to Marlin 114. So they do have the source code. Um, the the Zinkybot guys were very aware of the GPL and um, and like what it actually means and why it's important. So I was just thrilled because I told. Okay, well, I think we're back. I think we are. Are yeah. we back? Yep. All right. So they do give you glue stick. This is a big, super generic glue stick. Um, it's homing right now. So if you guys want to see that here, let me make. Uh... Got to move the school. No, oh, hang on. There we go. So it's all homed. Um, looks like we have to manually level the bed. Uh, I don't really think. Uh, I, you know, I probably could fit a mini, an easy ABL mini on here. I'm just saying. Um, do they have a level bed option here? Repair. Uh, they got a preheat PLA. There's no heated bed on this. And okay, so what I want to show you guys here, this is all linear rails. Do you see this? Linear rails. Like, this thing is solid. Like, I'm grabbing it by the hot end. There's no play in it. There's linear rails for the Z. There's one on each side, um, which I'll show you here. So there's one on that side, one on that side. And then if you can see under the bed, I'm doing a terrible job of showing this. Um, you can just trust me, there's one under the bed. Uh, or actually, duh. So there's the bed rail. Um, all linear rails, 100% linear rails. There's no V-slot. It's all linear rails. So that's likely why it's very expensive. Um, other than the fact that it's all fully assembled. Oh, it shows it on the back. What? Oh, the build length, volume? <laughs> 100 length, 135 width, 120 height. Weighs 13.7 pounds. 13.7 pounds, that's amazing. DC output 12 volts, 4 amps, 48 watts. Alright, I'm going to move my axis. Their, their buttons are a little touchy here.
All right. The thing is, X is not inverted. Okay, so X and Y are are backwards. If this is the front of the printer, it's put in the, the, the zero position at this back corner here, which is really odd. Easily fixed in uh, in firmware though, so not, not a huge deal. Let me just uh, disable the motors and manually level the bed real quick. I just moved so you didn't hit your head on it. You were wondering why it moved. Oh, okay. Kind of was. All right, so we're we're pretty we're level on all four corners. So, um, sounds cutting out. You said. I think it was probably just because we weren't talking, Tor. Like we talked right. for maybe like ten seconds there. So I'm gonna put some glue stick on the bed because I'm assuming it needs. That's why they supplied it. Man, I hate using glue stick. Oof. Smells like glue stick. All right, let's see if the SD works. SD card inserted. All right, so we got Kira operation. So, um, there's no. Ah, uh, I'm gonna have to slice for this thing. Oh, hell no. So, like I said, it thinks this is zero, zero. It should be zero, zero here tradi traditionally. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the um, these are weird clips for the bed though. They're just like I don't know what these are. Weird. Printer has a high pitched noise. That's... Oh the high pitched noise? Yeah it's the motors. It's very common. Annoying as fuck. All right, I'm gonna load up a benchy here. Actually, no, we're gonna do a Cali Cat. And uh, I think my Ender Two. What's gonna be my closest printer? I probably, actually, probably my start. So let me. Uh, Hairpin right, gonna... clips. Oh. Yeah. That seems right. On the opposite side. Uh, under three. Okay, what is my under two? It's just called under two. Okay. So I'm going to save as new. We're going to call this. Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to call this capsule. Go ahead and put that down. Um, and so we've got.
120 height. Is it wider than it is longer? Yes. I think I might have to flip in the slicer flip the, the table <laughs> let's connect it to s3 and see what its physical boundaries are i'm going to assume it's 115200 All right, we're connected here. Let me home everything. Okay, so everything's homing. So when I'm moving X in a positive direction, it's going left instead of right. So X is definitely a hundred limit. Wider than longer. My wife reminds me of that all the time. Oof. What what happened? Right in my mic. <laughs> Alright, let's home Y. Okay, so it'll, okay, 135, but it's not really, it, it, I don't know if you heard it skip. That's 131. So it's like 134, so pretty close. I'm just going to set the profile to 130. And I'm going to take their word that it's 120. And that's a weird bend. All right. Um, we need to... Get rid of the heated bed because it does not have one. And get rid of my octopi script here and no bed leveling. This is a boring startup script. Get rid of all this. Except for the home all, oh, we need a G28 still, obviously. All right, let's uh, let's begin printing over USB. I'll go back to the small cam, so you guys can see, and we'll give you a, a bird's eye view of it printing. Um, might help if I load filament into it though. We're just done through the top. It's just got a standard standard type extruder. Kind of hard to load the filament in at this angle. But I think I got it. Good night. There we go.
Alright, I got schmutz, schmutz on the nozzle. So filament's in. And it's hard to get off there. Alright. Now my guess is I have a feeling it's going to come out backwards because the firmware's not set up correctly because it's technically homing to max. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to print backwards. So I'm going to have to either flip um like flip the build I think I can flip the build table in um in S3D unless I'm looking at it backwards and this is the front maybe this is the rear and the front is doesn't make any sense this should be the front of the machine No, it's actually printing correctly. So th the front of the build, it, it's set up correctly. It just doesn't make sense because this is the front of the machine, except in your slicer, it's going to be backwards. Um, I think if I just flip... Let me see here. Looks like it's switching just fine. Yeah, we'll see how it's going. This is like my Ender 3 profile, so. It's going really well. It's Brin? What's the time estimated? Um, let's see. By the looks of it, it's like maybe fifteen minutes, not even. Yeah, it's 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 chuchin. Yeah, it's just a weird implementation. So technically in your slicer, the back side is the front of the printer, but the print is actually printing the correct direction. Oh, printing backwards. No, it's not. Yeah. Because you can judge by the tail on the Cali Cat. If yeah. you look, at, no, no. If you look in the preview, it comes off to the left, and it's coming off to the left. It's just this is the front of the printer yeah, firmware wise. It's still backwards, like in regards to. Right, but if you look at the preview and you look at how it's actually printing now, it's printing correctly. Yeah. So the part, the part's not coming out backwards. Just how you're seeing it is not typically oh i'm an idiot there's a spot there's a hole right on the side here to feed the filament in i went <laughs> i went all the way up top here <laughs> well i'm gonna let it i'm gonna let it finish towards it's a, not that loud actually towards asking about which hot end um it looks like just uh i don't know kind of like a a, a cr10 ish one uh, Michael Beal is asking, what's the blue light coming from the bottom of the build plate? Uh, the blue light? Yeah, if you look at the video, you can see it. Oh, I believe that's the data. Yeah, that's the data. <laughs> I'm printing with a Mac Pro. Hey, Scott, you'll be happy to know this company has already provided the firmware source and is aware of the GPL and why it's important, which is one of the main reasons I told him I'd give him a shot. I'm gonna head on out. You're gonna take off? 
Yeah. You wrote your hours on the board, right? Yeah. So, like, basically before we went to yeah, just food? Yeah, Okay. You still got dibs on that one, though, so whenever Comcast stops acting up, that's all yours. Sounds good. Hopefully, I'll make sure to buy gloves. <laughs> oh, and you know what I'm looking at here? All these belts are fiberglass reinforced. These are Gates belts on here. All right, you guys have a good night. Night, time, time, dry safe. Stream, have a good night. Or I'll hit you up tomorrow. Yeah, these are all fiberglass reinforced belts on here. Um, mechanically, as soon as I got this, I was like, okay, this feels solid. I see, um, I see why it costs four hundred dollars because they 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 went balls out on the hardware for sure. It's dual. This is dual Z, by the way. There's two lead screws in here, and there's a motor on each one. Um, I'm assuming unless they have a belt linked, which in that case that's fine. But there's definitely there's two lead screws. There's one on each end. I am curious to see how the print quality is. Yeah, these are these are yeah, this is this is the definition of overkill, especially on a machine this size. Um It's printing really good. So, um we're just going to be uh, hanging out here, so uh, feel free to ask questions. This was supposed to be a review for the G-Tech, but Comcast had other plans for that. So I was an idiot. I fed the filament in like this. Um, they actually have a nice little grommet there for the filament, so that was, uh, that was my fault. Um, let me see if I can focus. Oh, there we go. Is it going to focus the camera, or is it going to keep going bonkers because I can manually focus this thing I see your camera control there we go I don't know if I can zoom on this oh I can look at that not by not by too much, but it helps. Helps a little bit. How's that? It's coming out good, though. I'll give it that. The little printer that could. It's pretty quiet, though, too. Um, I'm curious to know what drivers they are. I'm going to check, like, the steps and stuff. Let's see. Tune... Very basic Marlin on here though. Control, let's see. I only control. There's no PIE, so I'm definitely gonna screw with this firmware. I told them if I make any changes, I'm gonna give it back to them. So. Who knows, maybe I'll keep it. Put it right next to, put it on my desk here. I, I will say it's printing really good right now. Really good. My only gripe is that it homes it homes in the corner um and this is technically the front as far as the, the back of the printer physically the firmware considers the front because of how it's set up. However, I can modify it so it's actually the front and I'm going to do that. So basically it'll home to max instead of homing to min. Um so I I definitely am going to do some firmware changes on here. I cannot blow rings. Even if I could, there's too much air moving in here.
Yeah, Project FPV, I think I think they kind of hit the nail on the head. This is this is compact. This will fit on a desk. Um, I mean, hell, you could even make a mount, a spool holder that goes up here um, to set the rule up here, you know. Um, now, this, this one comes with the LCD. They do have... Um, well, here's a problem. I've turned it around. The plugs are going to be on the front then. So this is what the front would look like. And the LCD is right here and it would be backwards. So this is the front of the printer as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to I'm going to modify the firmware anyways, so I might as well make those changes to have it home to Max and Min. Um Paul, um I got this printer sent directly to me from Zinkybot. Uh, they sell on Amazon, they sell on um aliexpress let me i'm gonna update the links in the video for the amazon ones um i'm really impressed so far honestly in all honesty uh so here's the thing when i when i get printers for review um here's how i evaluate them okay what is the build volume what is the cost and what is the quality of the parts okay so i literally took this out of the box and i'm printing Okay, immediately tack on $150 to that price tag of whatever you thought it was, okay? Um, this is this is nicer physical parts than like the Duplicator i3 Mini, which I also have, which is a good printer, but um, they did a lot of stuff right here mechanically. Like, like there's, there's fiberglass GT2 belts. Like the rollers, like look at those rollers. They have no play. Everything's nicely aligned. The belts have proper tension. Um, like I'm, I'm kind of getting a nerd boner over here over this. Um, like I'm printing with it. I didn't do anything to it except load the filament I printed. So, um. We'll, we'll have to see how the print quality is. Uh, so far, from what I can see, it's coming out pretty good. Um, yeah. There's there's literally nothing to do on this printer. You know, and the, the whole thing where it homes, that's just me being picky. Uh, but that can be fixed in firmware. And they provide the source. So that's the whole point of providing source code. Um, it's not just a bunch of neckbeards getting all bent out of shape because of... They're just, uh, like, they're just doing something just to make a point. It doesn't really have any impact or effect on anybody. They're just, you know, there's people that do that, and they can do that. That's fine. But the reason, like, not only because of the GPL, but it's like, okay, I like this machine, but I want to make some changes to it. I want to update it to the latest version of Marlin. Um, I want to change where it's homing so this can be the front of the machine. I can do that because they're providing the source code. Like that's the whole point of this is that you can is that you can make those modifications freely because it's your it's your machine and it's open source software and you should be able to do that. Um and that's the whole idea. Like um, I mean, the fact that this made it from here to China in one piece, too, um, it was really well packed. Everything fit inside. I mean, I, I'm, I'm color me impressed. I was honestly kind of on the fence about this one. They wanted to send me this one. I figured, oh, they're just being cheap. They just wanted to send me this one instead of the big one first. Um, but this is this is actually really impressed me um, so far. I'm definitely going to have to run this thing through its paces. Um, I don't know what this print bed material is. It looks like FR4, which is a uh, circuit board. Um, I mean, if you guys can see the, the, the part of the print you can see there, um, it's coming out really good. Um, there's no extrusion issues. Everything's even. Um, I literally just took a profile for my Ender 2 and modified it for this printer. Color me impressed. 
Build quality, I'd give it an 8 out of 10 for build quality. Maybe even a 9. Um, I'm going to take it apart, obviously, and see what's under the hood. Um, but I, I'm impressed with just the physical quality of this. Like, this thing is like... Where's my calibers? I, I just... I'll put the Amazon link if anyone wants to check it out in the description in a sec here. Let me find my calipers. I think they're outside because I just took a bunch of stuff off my desk and put it in a box so I can sort it. Um... But I want to say the, the steel this shell is made out of, I want to say it's three to four millimeters thick. It's, it's not thin at all. Like, it, it's pretty, it's pretty chooch. Um, you can see the little dent there. This is what I was talking about, this damage here. It's just cosmetic, but um, I'm assuming it was shipping damage or maybe it got damaged when they were packaging it. Either way, not a not a big deal. Um, yeah, let me get the uh, the link here. Zinky bot capsule. All right. Update here, Zinkybot capsule mini review. All right, so I put the the link in there. Uh, there you go. There's the Amazon link. If you guys use that, that is an affiliate link. Uh, basically, any proceeds I get um, from any sort of affiliate stuff, which I don't get too much anymore because I'm not really concerned about it, um, just goes to buying stuff for the streams. I don't use it for the business. It's more or less stuff that I can't really justify buying for the business. Um, like fancy filming and stuff. Um, that's where those proceeds go to. Um, yeah, so it's, it's that simple. Um, and plus they want to see that I'm pushing traffic to them. Like that's why companies give us printers is to market for them. Now, if you guys know me, I have had a bunch of bad printers before that I have not recommended. I actually even pulled the videos off. Um, I pulled the videos off of the channel because I thought they just, they didn't deserve to be up there. Um, like, I'm, I'm honest. I've had some companies get pissed off at me because I told them their product sucks. Um, I tell them why it sucks and give them a chance to fix it. If they don't, then that's the final verdict. It sucks. Don't buy it. Um... I, I'm I'm impressed. I really want to see how this print comes out on here. I kind of want to crank up the feed rate, but I don't want to screw up the print quality. Um, I do actually have lapel mics. I just didn't have time to get them out. So, how's the stream going? Because uh, YouTube's still saying uh, the stream health is bad. It's like orange or yellow. Luckily, I have a local copy of this, so I can cut this up and edit it. Um, I'll probably give them an actual video. I'll cut this up and edit it. and um, I really want to see how this is. It's pretty quiet. Like, my microphone's like a foot away from the printer. There is a slight high-pitched noise coming from it, but it's not, uh, it's not unbearable. Um, I'm going to send an M503 and see if I can grab any sort of information like steps. Let me see. I think I copied it. That terminal window is flying by pretty quick. All right. So I got it right here. M. All right. Okay. So this is interesting. So their X and Y steps 
are 160 steps per millimeter. Their Z is 3200. So, um, judging by the high pitch noise, I think they're running, um, the TI 8825 drivers in 130 second stepping mode, honestly, which I love those drivers. I have them on a lot of machines. I have a feeling that that's what they're running on these. Power adapters like warm ish. It's not hot. So I have a feeling based on this. So I can see the, obviously the, the, the X pulley here. And this is a standard size pulley. Yeah. So this has the same steps per millimeter as my start or smart, I call it, because it's metal now. It's basically a custom i3, um, another small printer. Um, has the same steps per millimeter and has the same belts and same um, drive gears here. So either they're running 8825 drivers or these are 0.9 degree stepper motors. Um, and the Z-axis is 3,200 steps per millimeter. So again, um, either 0.9 degree motors or it's the 8825 or some other 132nd stepping driver, um, which is, explains why it's quiet. You're not getting that zzz, 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 that you hear from the A4988. The A4988s are great drivers and the 4982s. However, they're loud. Um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to open this up once this is done printing because I want to see what electronics are in here. Um, given the rest of the build quality, I'm going to assume they put good good parts in it. Um, I'm just saying. Uh, Timothy Schneider, what are the benefits of the new drivers? Um, mainly noise. Um, you do get some more resolution, but is it something you're going to notice? Probably not. Um, I really want this print to finish so I can crack this open. It's printing really nice. I love it when I get some random printer in and it blows me away. Like, it doesn't happen often, but I, I color me impressed. In all, in all seriousness, like you got, so you got a bunch of people in the 3D printing space. You got people that just want a cheap machine. You got people that just want to make stuff. They don't want to tinker with it. Um, and you got people that are kind of in between, which is where I put myself. Um, because like sometimes I don't mind tinkering with a machine depending on how cheap it is. Um, and other times I just want a machine that works. Um, if the out of box experience is like this on every machine that they make, this is great for the people that don't mind spending a little extra money. Don't need a huge build volume. They just want to print PLA for prototypes. Um, if this thing holds up and lasts, then this is a solid little device. Um, I really like it. If you guys can't tell, I really, I really like it. Like just cause this thing, like I could, I could probably kill somebody with this thing and plug it in and print out, you know, a copy of the crime scene that I scanned with my 3d scanner. Like it's, it's pretty, pretty nice. They, they did good on here. I see why this costs $400. Like, can you imagine assembling this thing? It probably takes four or five, eh, maybe not four or five hours, probably three hours to assemble the thing. Um, just cause it's so tight. Um, they do give you a little, Hey, you, H E Y U, um, S D reader. Um, and it is a, is it going to mess up my print if I take the card out? No, it's not uh, a four gig Kingston card, an actual Kingston card. Um, this is not a knockoff. This is an actual genuine Kingston card. So not bad. Um, anybody got any questions here? So while we're waiting for this to print, yeah, I, I'm, I, there's, so here's the thing. I didn't really look into this. They approached me. I said, yeah, sure. Send me whatever you want. We'll check it out. Um, you know, and give me the source code for the printers. Cause if you don't, I didn't tell them if they don't, I'm not going to feature them. I just requested it. And if they denied it at that point, I'd be like, well, you kind of have to. Um, otherwise this printer is never going to see the light of day on my channel. <laughs> um, but no, they were totally cool about it. Um, and understood it. 
I like this little spool holder. This is nifty. I feel stupid that I missed this hole on the side. I'm assuming there's documentation on the on the flash drive as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, thousand plus hours without maintenance. I would probably say that's accurate. I mean, these belts are gonna last a, a long time. These are nicer belts than I have on it. I have cheap, like just reinforced belts, not fiberglass. Like these are really nice belts on here. So linear rails, nice belts. Um, either we got 0.9 degree steppers or 8825 drivers. So we got higher resolution motors or steppers, one of the two. Um, all linear rails, solid like three or four millimeter steel construction. Like, holy shit. Like, they aren't, they aren't screwing around, you know. And like I said, some of you people are like, oh, well, I can go buy an i3 Mini that's got about the same build volume for half the price. Great. The i3 Mini is a great printer. I got one here. Um, but I can tell you right now, this thing's more than likely printing nicer than it, though. And mind you, this is a completely untuned profile for this. This is just a profile from a similar machine. And by similar, I mean it's a 3D printer and it was small. Um, I used my Ender 2 profile for this. Now, me personally... Um, I'm growing more and more fond of small printers and it's because I can actually get more work done. Like, let's say I have space, like I have space my shelf typically for two large printers or I can fit three or four small ones. And if what I'm printing, which I typically am, is small enough to fit on that small print bed, then it is more advantageous for me to have multiple smaller machines instead of large machines because let's say I can print between two mach two big machines let's say I can print 12 enclosures or just let's say 12 project boxes and it's going to take longer to print on those two large ones than to divvy up that same 12 between um you know three or four smaller machines you're going to get the job done quicker because you got more machines printing one or two parts instead of one big machine printing four or five that is, you guys following me here and we're at we're at about 65 percent right now on the print it should start going a lot quicker once it finishes up the tail which i think it is and the uh the tail and the okay it's i think it's done with the tail i'm looking at the g code preview here yeah it's it's definitely done with the tail so it should start going quicker it's doing the head this is called the cali cat um so here's the thing with me and small printers typically so like the g tech a30 i'm going to give that away um, I don't know if I'm going to do a giveaway on the channel or if I'm going to give it to a friend of mine because um, I have friends that help me out and a few of them will not let me pay them. So I give them stuff. Um, basically, I give them all sorts of I got I always got computer stuff laying around printer stuff. Um, so I'm like, well, I'm going to give you some stuff for free then because you've helped me out. Uh, but Tyler's got divs on the wood printer. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with the A30. Um, if I don't do anything with this, I think Tor wanted this one. Um I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. It depends on um, how fond I am of it after I play around with the uh, um, after I play around with the firmware. I may end up keeping it, um, especially because it's small. I can fit it on my desk, and I'm limited on space here. Yeah, I'm not doing a drop test, Mike. It's not happening. I don't even know how many viewers we have. How many viewers do we have in here? I didn't, I haven't even checked um my 
my little thing i think my stream deck is updating it says 18. is that correct wow it is 18. okay which means my stream deck is actually working correctly for once um because it uh it actually shows it on my my thing here do you guys see this this is how i switch scenes and everything um but you see that little red thing in the corner right there that shows me the uh the current viewers so i don't know how often it updates but um this is the first time it's actually worked um they did just release a bunch of updates for it so uh we probably got about i don't know 10 more minutes tops until this is done so if you guys got any questions let me know it's been printing for 32 minutes so far Uh, Tor, I didn't know you streamed, but if you're going to get into streaming, I love the stream deck. Um, it was completely worth the 150 bucks I spent on it. Um, I really hope I wrote that off as a business expense because I literally just use it for videos and channels. <laughs> um, so like the stream deck, like, so I got, this is small cam. So I press this, this goes my main, um, this goes to a printer, which I have disabled right now. My main monitor. Uh, my right monitor, if I had a guest on, it would go to the right. I can roll my intro, which I got to resize. Um, this was a split screen setup I had, which again, I got to resize because I changed my, um, I changed my rendering area, my actual scene area from 2K down to 1080 because I broadcast in 1080. There's no reason for me to ren render it on my PC, take out more resources and do it at 1440 only to then scale it down. So I'm rendering everything at 2K and then scaling it down to 1080. It's just, it's the waste. So, um, uh, Tor, on a note of the computer, because I know you have, do, do you have an older uh, one than I do? Because I was seriously thinking about upgrading mine, um, getting a new processor, motherboard, and RAM, and I've got 32 gigs of RAM and a 4790K with a really nice board um that i'm gonna be selling because i don't have any computers here that need that horsepower um because when i'm running like f i think when i was running like nine or ten uh different video feeds for my octoprint setups my processor was getting close to 90 to 100 um so i i i could sell it to you for stupid cheap um and that would give me a reason to go get a new uh new board processor and memory Hopefully memory came down because I was looking at like 64 gigs was almost a grand when I was looking for a DDR4, which is insane. It's just freaking insane. Um, also, this processor is already delitted. I put liquid metal on here and then relitted it. So it's still got the IHS on it, but there's liquid metal between the actual core die and the heat spreader. So... Yeah, if anybody's got any recommendations on uh, a new Intel setup, I want to get like at least 32 gigs of RAM, um, i7 or higher, maybe an i9. Um, so, yeah, uh, make some suggestions because I, I think I'm going to start looking into that. I can actually justify upgrading it since I'm going to be doing this stuff more. Um, don't get me wrong, I love this 4790K. It, it chugs along. This thing's been running great for, I think, two or three years now. Um, it's just when I'm doing the live stuff where it needs a, uh, it needs a little more beefy CPU, but, um, I've already got a graphics card wise. I've got a 1080 TI. I've got a thousand watt, um, EVGA gold power supply. So literally I'm just changing my board processor to memory. I I'm not changing my solid state drives. My, um, I've got two 500 gig uh eve samsung evo 850s they're sata and those are in a rate zero i've got a 64 gig ssd just for a cache drive for the three three terabyte raid five array so i've got six drives total in the system um and those are fine i'm not going to upgrade any of that stuff because all that stuff is more than adequate for me now i just need to get a slightly beefier cpu and honestly if i had a option to 
upgrade, even if it cost me 800 bucks to upgrade the processor on here to something faster than the 4790, I would just do that. Um, so I don't have to rebuild the whole computer, um, but that's not an option. So I have to basically rebuild my computer. So. Yeah, Project FPV. Um, you can email me at tim at th3dstudio.com and I'll check it out because, yeah, some recommendations. Like, I don't mind it. My my budget's about $2,000 um, for this upgrade. for us. So $2,000 is what I got to spend on a motherboard, 32 gigs of memory minimum, and... Um, and... Uh, an i7 or higher so um i don't mind spending money this this thing i went balls out on this build when i built it like three or four years ago and that's usually what i do i, I i'll drop like five grand on a computer i'm not trying to brag here or anything but this this is my my process i i go all out i get the highest end shit i can afford and then i use it for years so uh and usually i use it till it dies but most of the stuff um most of the stuff I've sold because I have everything on battery backups. I take care of my stuff. Um, and uh, currently I couldn't justify upgrading, but now I'm doing more content creation with this. Um, I, I need something with a little more horsepower. So, but for God, for games and stuff, this thing still is no problem. I'm running this at um 4.6 gigahertz and tour if i do sell you this whole setup i will not clear the bios so you'll have the overclock and everything still um just make sure you get a decent i'm using a corsair h110i gt so a dual 140 rad cooler um but this thing is rock solid um i just need something a little faster sometimes and it, it frustrates me when i go to use it like 90 percent of my 90 percent of my usage okay um i don't even come close to maxing out this processor on here but it's when i'm doing streaming and i got i start adding more and more is when i'm pushing the envelope on there so um that's that's my thought process for upgrading um i don't want to because i really don't want to rebuild this whole computer but um I th you I think around this time is usually pretty good pricing on stuff. You got some new things coming out. I don't mind buying um towards the end of a cycle if the prices are lower, if you guys know what I mean. But there's no reason to upgrade my video card. I have a 1080 Ti. What I'm, I don't play I don't play games anymore. Um I literally use the graphics card for video rendering. Um like right now OBS is leveraging the Nvidia encoder on there to render the video to take the load off the processor. Um, and I use the new, I got the newest Sony Vegas, which is amazing. Um, for when I do actually edit videos, I can have it render everything. Um, I can have it render everything on the GPU. So I, I can actually justify the graphics card in here now. Um, but, uh, project FPV at these overclocking settings, uh, water cooler is highly recommended. Um, I am... Um, I am hoping that my current water cooler will work with the new processor. If not, I'll just send you freaking everything. I'll send you, I, I probably won't send you fans with it. So you have to get 140 millimeter fans. Cause I've got some really nice Noctua's that I paid like 30 bucks a piece for. Um, but if I can't use my, my water cooling setup that I have in there now, then I'll just send the whole thing, um, and I'll give you a stupid deal on it because I just I just don't want it sitting here, is the thing. So, do I have a big system or in? A, I have a very it's a it's a ATX case. Look up the Corsair 400D. I've got a lot crammed into that case, and the radiator is front mounted. Um, only the processor is water cooled. Everything else is air cooled. Um, I've done crazy water cooling setups. I was a huge PC modder um, years ago, and I still can do all the stuff. I just don't. It it doesn't matter as much to me. I still want a fast computer, um, and I water cool the processor. But I'm not going to go through the hassle of uh, water cooling the CPU 
or not the CPU, the GPU and motherboard and all that other stuff. Been there, done that. It's it's more hassle than it's worth, especially considering um, like the, the stock cooler on my 1080 Ti, the thing doesn't go above 60 C under a full load. Like it's it's plenty. Like why do I need to go lower than 60? So um, I've got two 140s in the top that exhaust out, a 120 in the rear that exhausts out, um, and then two 140s in the front that pull in. So, all right, we're getting close to the top. We're at 90% completion now. Oh, I love the smell of PLA. Nineteen fifty X, that's an AMD chip, right, Kill Switch? Oh, and fun fact, since you bring up the energy management uh project FPV. Um, you said Dan Quick. Ah oh, why does that name sound so freaking familiar? Um, anyways, I used to have two nine eighty TIs. Um, and I sold the 10, there, I sold the two 980 TIs and got a 1080 TI just to cut down on my power and heat. That's, that's the only reason. Um, it is a little faster. The one 1080 TI is a little faster than both of the 980s, but I literally spent, I think I spent after I sold the old cards, I spent 200 bucks to go to the 1080 TI, um, because I was tired of how much heat the 980s were putting out. So, um, this, that's how boring my life is. I upgraded just to save power and heat because I'm old and I'm an adult now. <laughs> oh yeah. I remember you, man. Um, you message me all the time and honestly you and like a bunch of other people, I always forget to get back to you guys. Um, cause honestly my day routine is I get up, I eat, uh, typically I shower, um, if not a shower later in the day. And then I am on the support tickets, taking calls, um, running off prints for products and customers. And then I, I get off the computer and I, I crash. I forget to follow up with people. And it, it like some people think it's because I'm blowing them off. It's literally just that I forgot cause I'm so damn busy. Um, and like just sometimes I, I just shut my phone off. Um, like, this is my downtime. I don't know if that's sad or what, but, like, this is my time for a break. When I do the live streams and stuff and I hang out with you guys, um, this is my downtime, and I enjoy doing this, and I appreciate everybody that stops by. I know, you know, like, tonight we had technical difficulties. I wish we could have got this G-Tech built. Uh, at least we got something going here. Um, you know, but... It, honestly, I, I love the fact that my wife and I are running our own business, but dear God, the amount of time it takes is insane. Um, and I'm just, I'm always worried that if I'm not always on top of everything, like if I get a customer that's just upset and if I'm not just like responding immediately that everything's going to go to shit. Um, and it's, it's really stressful. Um, and I've been trying to disconnect more so I can actually, uh, so I can actually enjoy my life. Like, you know, um, you know, we're doing well here and, you know, I haven't even, you know, we, we actually technically took a pay cut because we're not taking that much of a salary from the company. Um, you know, but I don't really, I don't really have extravagant tastes or anything. Like, I just want to make sure our mortgage is paid and all our bills, um, you know, and that the wife is happy. Um, you know, but I like TH3D is my baby, and I've got literally, like, at the end of this year, I'll be two years of my life tied up in there, and. Um, you know, I, I just want to see it do well. And personally, 
I feel like if I fail, I'm not just letting, like, I'm not letting, not just letting myself down and, you know, my wife and, you know, if we have a family one day, which, I mean, we will, we, that's in the plans, um, but I feel like I'd be letting everybody that relies on us because, like, we we make like the whole point of the company is to make these kind of things that are complicated and hard for people um accessible and easy to understand and have someone you can call and if i can't do that because i failed you know and you know it's like what are my customers going to do if i'm no longer there to help them out and it's you know, I guess it's, I don't know if pressure would be the right word, but I I really honestly feel like absolute shit if some reason, someday I can't do this. Um, yeah, <laughs> so sorry to get all sappy on you. Our print is done here. Um, let's see. I'm just going to kind of knock it off the bed. There we go. All right. Wow. Um. This is pretty damn good. I'm not even going to lie. Um, super smooth. Layers are super even. Overhangs are good. Um, wow. I'll uh, show this here. Let me uh, let me adjust the focus on the cam here, and I'm gonna preheat this nozzle so I can route the film in the correct way, because I'm stupid. Um, I know I had my video settings here. Where are my video settings? Configure video. Oh, it's right here. All right. All right. So, let's get into the nitty gritty here. So, decent. Now, I haven't tuned anything. Like, I haven't tuned my extrusion multiplier. This is a profile from another printer. And this came out real nice. Not bad at all. Like, this is super smooth. Like, those layer lines are super even. Could have got a little lower on the bed, but not bad considering I half ass leveled that in like, I don't know, a few minutes. This is 0.2 millimeter layer height. Look at the kitty. Um, I'm going to give this like a 7 out of 10 for print quality, in all honesty. Um, especially considering I didn't even, I haven't even dialed this in yet. Like, this is, I wish you guys could feel this, because this is, this is super smooth. Super smooth print. Um... Yeah, I'm 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 legitimately impressed with the quality. Um yeah, there's like no ring on here. Let me uh I'm going to crack this open and pick at the electronics and then we're going to call it a night. Um I may add this into the unified firmware just for funsies. Um, I don't think I'm going to do bed leveling on it, honestly. I don't think it's going to need it. Plus, there's not really... Because this head is, like, so flat, and it goes all the way up against the side, there's really no way for me to mount a probe without getting in the way of things. So, just fine. Not a big deal. Woo! Woo! All right, so there's uh, if 
I take the take the plate off the bed there this is how we get to the actual carriage here um, that goes right into the bearing block um, I'm assuming yeah all the electronics are down here all right so let's uh, let's get this baby open you guys know I love taking apart machines um, if I could just find their wrench they included that fit these that'd be great because uh, I don't know where my wrenches are at the moment I don't feel like hunting for them and the thing is I know they included one that fits this Ah, I found my tools. Um, Tim at th3dstudio.com. There you go, Mike. Is that better? All right, let's see what's in this. I want to say it's going to be an MKS type board. That's another thing, too. I'm going on and on about everything. Like, I I made a post. I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of in a sentimental mood or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I made a post on the... Um, our Facebook page. Oh, this is... <laughs> uh, it's funny. This, uh, this screw does not have any threads on it. Um, which is funny. How did you not... How do you not notice that? <laughs> um, so I guess I'll put a new screw in there. That's funny. All right, let's see here. Uh, how do I get this out of here? Man, this is tight. Whoa. Um. Oh, I totally called it. Um. It's TH3D Studio. Um, so this board in here is the MKS Mini, which I actually have experience with. I had one for a while. And, uh, yeah, so they have, like, I'll show you on here. So to get the power... And the USB, they have little extensions. So the ones in the back are just extenders. Um, I'm very familiar with this board. So uh, the MKS Mini has ADA25 drivers on it, which is what I what I said I thought based on the step value. Um, this is a nice, compact, tiny little board. Um, it is dual Z. Holy crap. It's actually dual NEMA 17s for the Z. Or not 17s, uh, 13s, I want to say they're called. They're, they're really tiny. Um, man, build quality on this is nice. But yes, this is a... Uh, these are 8825 drivers. And there's your MKS mini board here. Which, uh, like I said, I actually bought one of these from Amazon. I played with it, and it was a really nice board. So it's a it's a twenty five sixty AT or Atmel chip, and they got a splitter on here. It looks like they're wired in parallel for the Z. Um, so I could change. So to change uh, the X and Y homing, I could change the plugs to min and max, or from min to max on the board, or um, just to retain compatibility with how these come from the factory, I can modify the pin configuration in, um, in Marlin, which is what I'm going to do, because if I'm going to put out firmware for people for this printer, I don't want to have to have them open this up and make modifications. Um, solid board 
solid everything. Um, the only thing is, like I said, it got that cosmetic dent um, at the top during shipping, and I found a screw that doesn't have any threads on it. Uh, like, this, this is a nice little machine. Now, here's what I might do is, since I haven't played with mesh leveling um, on any machines because I have probes, I might actually use mesh leveling on here. Um, so maybe that'll be something I'll do. I'll, I'll get my, my hands dirty with mesh leveling on this printer since I don't want to put a probe on it because it's so tiny. I just dropped a screw. So the good news is though, um, yeah, so it's 8825 drivers. That's why it was so quiet. Cause it's got those nice drivers on there. Um, definitely gonna do more test prints with this. Uh, this is this is a nice little machine. Uh, all honesty, if you guys got, uh, if you're one of those people that just wants to print, um, if you want to buy it, I th I think unless something major comes up, I think this is gonna be a buy. Um, if if this applies to you, if you're one of these people, like I said, you just want to make stuff. You don't want to be screwing with everything. Um, and that's what some people got to realize is that not everybody has time to take a $200 printer, put another 120, 200 bucks into it and spend all that time upgrading it. Um, yes, this is a small build volume, but, uh, this company put a lot of attention to detail into the physical build quality. Um, and it shows it really does. Um, the fact that I was able to get this decent of a print without any tuning, um, there's there's no ringing on here whatsoever. I I can't even see any. I'm I'm very impressed with this printer, Zinkybot. If you guys are watching, um, good job. Honestly, good job on this machine. This is a really nice machine. Um, I'm a fan. I I really am actually. So kudos to you guys for making a good printer. So yeah. Very nice. Um, it does have an adjustable ZN stop. It's not too fancy. It is literally this screw back here. Um, hey, it works. Right? Um, yeah. Not bad at all. Thanks, Project FPV. Um, let me go find a screw uh, to replace the one that doesn't have any uh, any threads on it. That's That's comical. That's not the first time I've seen that happen. Not just from China stuff. Here we go, found a screw. Yeah, um, I like it. Now, like I said, sorry, I got a screw in my mouth. Um, because I'm replacing the one that didn't have any threads. Um, like I said, uh, providing that I don't have any major issues with this, this is a nice machine. Um, it's nice seeing especially a Chinese company um, putting out a product like this. So let's let's compare this to like, let's say a Prusa. Okay, Prusa is going to give you more build volume. Fully assembled Prusa is going to run you a grand. Okay. This is 400 bucks. Fully assembled. I have done nothing to this. And it printed great. So, yeah. I, I like it. I, I was... Like I said, I was kind of skeptical. Not skeptical, it's just like, eh, it's a tiny printer. And then I started looking at it more and more. And then when we were doing the, you know, going through it here, um, I, I see why they charge what they do because the, the attention to details there, um, like I said, the only thing I can gripe about is, hey, how did you miss a, <laughs> how'd you miss a screw that doesn't have any threads on it? Um, but whatever, I'm nitpicking. Uh, if I never took the bottom panel off, I, it wouldn't have affected me. It actually stayed in there, so. But. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to assume it's not an all-metal hot end, which it doesn't have a heated bed, so... Do you really need it? Probably not, because you're going to be you're gonna be printing PLA, PLA on this. Um, I'm sure you could wire up a heated bed to it. The MKS Mini does have a heated bed output. Um, it does not have a built-in MOSFET, so if you did put a heated bed on this, you would have to have a separate power supply for the heated bed, um, the control wire going out, and then the power wire going back to the printer bed to actually heat said bed. Now, for prototyping, which um, I think... Uh, Project FPV talked about this would be looks like a nice little prototyping printer um, and I'd have to agree so this is small enough to not take up a ton of room on your desk um, print quality is great uh, I wish I had my caliper so I can measure this um, I'll find them tomorrow but all in all uh, this is nice quality what I might do is actually put a 0.25 nozzle on here and try doing some miniatures on here and seeing how that does. Uh, cause this could be a killer little machine for doing miniatures. So, you know, you can, you can do it at the 0.4 nozzle too, but I got 0.25s that we sell in the shop that should fit this. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this is going to give you a lot better print quality um, even at higher speeds because like there's like I'm pulling on this rail. There's no like there's like no play in these things like at all it's it's solid it's really solid Yeah, these these belts, these are nice. These feel real. Damn. There's no weights in this at the bottom. Uh, there's none. It's a steel frame, and it's got two of like I said, the NEMA. They look, I believe, they're NEMA thirteen steppers. Um, and the three seventeen. So one for X, one for Y, and one for E. Try and get this clip back on. There we go. Um, yeah, all in all, color me impressed. Um, I went into this not expecting much, and uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna run this through its paces. I think I have some cutoffs of build sheets. Um, So, or, you know, I might just put, cut down one of my Ender 2 mats, because if I just put a mat on here, then I won't even need to use the glue stick, because on the i3 Mini, the Wano i3, Duplicator i3 Mini, uh, that's my wife's printer, um, the stock mat was terrible, um, I couldn't get anything big to stick on it, so I put our, uh, I took our Ender 2, sorry, Ender 2 mats, um, I cut it down, put it on the bed, and everything sticks to it, so I think if I put that on this surface here, um, we in real good shape. I won't have to mess around with any glue stick. But this print stuck. Um, it didn't come up with the glue stick. So, I mean, it, out of the box, it gives you everything you need. Um, I don't know if they gave me filament. I don't remember C filament in here. I'm not going to ding them for that. I really don't care. Um, if you're getting a 3D printer, you should have filament anyways. The little samples they give you are, aren't even enough to print a Benchy. Or usually even one of these. So, um, anybody have any more questions? Um, cause I'm going to wrap this stream up in a sec here. Um, I just want to say thank you for everybody stop by. I will post, I'm going to play with the firmware tomorrow and I will post my S3D profile once I spend some more time dialing this in. Um, and then the updated firmware. I'll post it on the TH3 site so everybody has it. Um, and yeah, um, I think a TH3D mat would look nice on here. A kill switch, make some black build sheets. So here's the thing. Um, 
if I change, we can we absolutely could do black. We do black, red. I think our our supplier can do black, red, blue, and white. Um, Scott, I wish I could make it to Earth. I can't. Um, we got too much stuff going on here with the business. Um, I it, it, honestly, what sucks is if I take time to go to an event like that, I'm gonna be so far behind, and we're just caught up again after all the shit happened um with the wife and the car accident yeah uh, i can't make earth this year maybe next year but um yeah but in regards to the bed mats i can do different colors the problem is um we have to order a minimum of a hundred sheets per size and color so as soon as i tell them i can't tell them let's say i'm ordering a hundred sheets and I say okay I want 50 of those are blue with the white and I want 50 of those with the black and the design in white I can't do that I have to order a hundred of the blue and a hundred of the black um, and we stock five different built five hang on one two we stock five different build sheet sizes um, the Ender 2, the Ender 3, um, the CR10, S4, S5, and obviously those work with other printers. Like I use S4 sheet on my Alpha Y's use 10. Oh, sorry. Um, I use the Ender 3 mat on my Anet A8, which is now an AM8. I just trimmed the edge down because the sheet is 235 by 235. My bed's 220 by 220. No big deal. Um, I actually have, you know, those big slicers that you slice papers with um i slice my mats with them to resize them for different printers um because you can cut you can cut our mats so um you know like uh what uh like i said for my wife's printer the duplicator i3 mini i trimmed down the ender 3 mat and put it on her bed so um yeah it's kind of weird because people are like oh can you stock the cr10 mini well my price on a cr10 mini by the time I pay shipping and import fees and we count in our payment processor fees, they would literally be like 50 cents to a dollar less than a CR10 size mat versus just saying, hey, buy the CR10 mat and just cut it. Because um, then that's one less product than we have to stock as well. So you also got to think about that from a business perspective. You don't want to be stocking a million different variations of products when there's an easy workaround i mean hell if someone wants a bunch of cr10 mini sizes and they don't want to cut them like i don't know throw a two dollar tip on there i'll cut them all down for you with our slicer here i don't care um i use my cr10 sheets on the mini we have here i just literally took it i cut it put it on the bed you know it doesn't matter you can trim them um oh, sorry guys but uh, I'll I'll ask him about black with red lines would look kind of cool. Um, I can definitely do. Um, they would def they they would definitely they can definitely do black with white text. Um, Project FPV. Um, the boxes the design on our bed mat is already sizable. Um, so meaning. Each square, the small square is 10 millimeters. So if you know you need to cut it down to 220, you can just mark it off uh, 22 squares, count it out, make a little note, and cut it. So the mats by design, um, I intentionally did that design, not just because it looks cool, but if you need to cut it down, it's super easy. You just go, okay, I have a 220 bed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Count to 22, make a mark on each end, and cut it um that's what i do it's it, it was kind of a a little feature not just for looks but for practicality with resizing them uh yeah i can't do different color designs um so how the mats work is you have your base matte color which is blue red or black um and then uh, it's blue, red, or black. 
and then the design can be white. So I can have a red build sheet with white design. I can have a black build sheet with white design. I can have a blue build sheet like we have with white design. Um, and whatever I order, I have to order a minimum of 100 sheets. So, and if, and actually all the sheets we have um, were all sizes that this company did not make already. So they didn't have all the forms and molds and everything. Um, they call them molds. I don't think they're actually molds. I, I need to, I want to ask them more about it. Um, but there, there's a setup fee essentially. Um, when you order a size from them that they don't have already. So we had to pay a setup fee five times, one for each mat size. And we paid that once. And now that we paid that, we can order them. Um, cause they already have all the settings to get everything properly set up to make the mats. So, um, anytime we add a new sheet size that they don't already have all those parameters for, we have to pay them for their time to set up all their equipment to then make the other size mats. Um, and I'm assuming part of that too is I'm assuming they have to get, you know, the adhesive on the back and get everything trimmed correctly. They have some sort of jigs to put those on so they can get everything on there perfectly. So, um, yeah, that's why we don't have a million sizes. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> Um, I think the size rank offering we have now is probably going to be our offering for a while um, because of the fact that we kind of have everything covered. We got 165 by 165, so we cover from that size down. We got 235 by 235, which covers from that size down. We got 310 by 310, 4, 410 by 410, 508 by 508. Um, we have literally every size we can think of covered, and the price points are really good. So... Um, yeah, um, that's uh, that's the little inside of uh, the mind and uh, process of what we do. You know, just some of the stuff we do here. Like, this is just build mats. Like, it's there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of moving parts. We've got a lot of overhead because um, we are a full business. Like, we just had to get um, we had to get all this insurance stuff figured out for um, not healthcare because we had already figured that out last year. Um, but like liability insurance, uh, workers comp, like I have to pay workman's comp for uh tour who works remotely on his computer doing support tickets. We have to have workman's comp for that. And he's actually a contractor. So tour, um, goes on when he can, he doesn't really have set hours. He's more of a backup for when something is going on with me. Um, and just when I need an extra hand, I can go, Hey, I need you to jump on um, all hands on deck type of situation. Um, so, but you would think that because he's a contractor and we don't like, he's not on our payroll. Uh, we still pay him every month um, that we wouldn't have to carry workman's comp insurance for that. But in the state of Illinois, you do. Um, and I have to also pay workman's comp for other guys too. Um, and like Tyler that was here, uh, he's a part-time guy. He comes when he can, he writes his hours. Now we pay him every, you know, I think we pay him every week. Um, uh, we just cut him a check at the end of the week for the hours he worked. Um, but we have to have workman's comp for that. Um, and my wife and I, we can opt out of having workman's comp insurance because we're owners. Um, but we're even not sure if we want to do that or not in terms of opting out because, let's say my wife gets in another accident when she's on the way to or from the post office. She technically then gets injured on the job and we can then make a workman's comp claim. So they'll cover like her medical and uh, other, other things that are associated with that. But you're talking five, 6,000 a, a year um, on top of what we're already paying for coverage on her whereas like our medical deductible i think our deductible for the year is 7500 um so it's kind of like do we just do we get it or do we just use our medical um you know and i i believe i believe the workman's comp would also cover lost wages and since i'm me and my wife are receiving wages like we're on payroll from th3d um, it would cover lost wages. 
So uh, it might be advantageous for us to do it. I need to get more info, honestly, to figure out what we're doing. Um, this is all the fun stuff. Like people just think, oh, make product, put on site, ship it out, get money. No, it's there's there is so much stuff. Um, and it's just kind of like we were flying by the seat of our pants trying to keep everything going. And now we want everything legitimate. And there's a lot of expenses that come with running a business. Um, it's it's crazy. There's there's so much stuff that you don't even think about. Um, it, you know, I'm not complaining. It was just it's it's just a lot. A lot of stuff that you don't even think about. So when it's given me a greater appreciation for all these small businesses I've worked for, worked for, worked with over the years, or just when I meet another person running a small business, um, it's like, damn, I know what you've had to do to make this a thing, to make this a company and have everything running. Like it, it, it gives me a newfound respect and understanding for that, you know? Um, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money too. So, I mean, like we have not only our personal expenses, just for the company, our company, we have to, we have about 2000, uh, a month in just business related expenses, like our phone lines, um, like our, our website hosting, our shipping service, um, our health insurance, our workman's comp insurance, general liability insurance. Uh, there's there's a bunch of other stuff, but it was it was almost two grand a month, like, and that's that's just stuff that we don't really get anything for right away. It's more of a, in case something happens. Um, but that's two grand a month on top of my mortgage, my electric bill, my internet, um, food, gross, you know, food, groceries clothing like um there's there's a lot there's a lot of that's what that's what people talk about overhead overhead is all this other stuff that like all these government regulations make you get to cover your ass in case something happens um so when businesses talk about um well this why does this cost more than direct from china um because we have overhead like china doesn't give a crap about any of that stuff they just have cheap labor someone gets hurt pfft, Oh, well, you know, they're much more lax over there about that stuff. Whereas here in the U.S., there's a lot of stuff we have to comply with. Um, and that compliance costs us a lot of money every month. So at least 24 grand of what we make profit-wise has to go towards all these different types of coverages and fees that just come along with running the business. And there's a ton of other stuff. Like I haven't even covered like our laser printers we use for printing packing slips, our label printers, um, all of our networking equipment, our computers, um, toner, paper, labels, boxes, packing material. Um, like there's a lot. So, anyways, I'll stop ranting. Uh, running a small business is a lot of work, is what I'm the TLDR. So, uh, Mike, I don't know what key man insurance is, um, but I'll look into it. And uh, you have a good night, man. Um, I'm finally starting to crash. So, hopefully, I can actually sleep tonight. I haven't been able to sleep really well for I don't even know how long. So that doesn't help because I'm sitting in bed just like thinking and thinking and thinking. It's just like shut off your brain, go to sleep, Tim. And it doesn't happen all the time. You know, I'm just trying to constantly think about like what's my next move going to be? What do I have to do tomorrow? Like what do I need to follow up on? That kind of stuff. What about what about Comcast?
Uh, Kill Switch. I did have a, a Discord set up, but like nobody used it, so I deleted it. Um, honestly, it'd be nice to have a place to just for me if I'm not on a call or something to just chilling and even just have have somewhere to bullshit um, and just make the day go by a little bit easier. You know, like I like talking to people. I like talking to people about this stuff. Like, you know, it's it's enjoyable. I you know I wouldn't like let me put it this way. If I didn't, um, I'm setting up a Discord server right now again, so you guys can sit tight. Um, but uh, like if I didn't enjoy doing this stuff, there's no way. I would be putting in all this time um into into building this like you know it, I feel like this type of thing like 3 3D printing stuff um you have to be passionate about it because it's going to be very apparent if you're just here like you're just you're just here to make money like it's just another business opportunity and I'm not saying I'm I'm not making money and that's not my goal like i have to make money i have to pay the bills otherwise i can't do any of this stuff like i could probably still do a couple live streams here and there but um i wouldn't be able to put as much time into stuff like you know the firmware and just products and even helping people um if i was you know if i didn't have this company so um uh, it really bothers me when people immediately are like they, they have there's a negative stigma that comes along with as soon as money's involved and i know some people get really um you know asshole-ish about it when money gets involved um but what i'm referring to is just people that have a problem with companies trying to actually do good and trying to like put out good products and trying to take care of their customers, you know, which is what I try to do. Like, you know, I had some guy that was like, Oh, you're all your crap is just from AliExpress. Well, a lot of the stuff we sell, yes, it is from China. Um, but I'm not buying it from AliExpress. Like you don't know the quality you're going to get. Like I have trusted suppliers that I use over there that get me high quality stuff, um, which you're not going to get from, AliExpress. It's kind of a, it's kind of just a, a a Russian roulette or what I call it, Chinese roulette of buying parts, uh, which I went through on my own um, because I was just a, you know, I was just a, a guy that had a 3D printer and I'm on these forums and I'm just like, okay, well, I want to buy a hot end. Oh, I'm going to buy a V6 clone. I get it. And it's just garbage. You know, and I did that like six or seven times. I wasted so much money buying crap clones. Um, and then I kept seeing people having the same issue. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to stock these because I want someone to have an alternative to the Chinese clones that are that no one knows what you're going to get. Like, I can guarantee you that you're going to get what I say comes with the kit and the parts that come in the kit when you buy a product from us. You know, and like that alone has value, you know, not just talking about like I am a business and I have overhead, but me personally, I pay more for things from reputable sellers because I have that confidence in them that they're going to give me what they say they're selling me, you know, so it's not, it's not like I go buy a V6 clone, it says all metal and it's got ptfe in the heat break like you know like come on like it, it's it's little stuff like that um that really irks me and it's like just just provide what you're actually saying you're selling you know um i don't care if it's a four dollar hot end or a hundred dollar hot end like make sure your your listings are accurate like it, it's aggravating and like that's the reason I started selling other stuff and branching out into different products, not just my stuff that we make. Um, it's because I'm just like, okay, this is ridiculous that you know we're you know we're we wait a month and a half for a freaking part to come in and we get it and it doesn't even work correctly or it's not the correct part or it's not 
what they advertise. You know, it's it's a waste of time. And the the, the Chinese sellers know that you're not going to go and waste your time for a $6 hot end to try to get a refund. Some people might, but most of the people are just going to be like, eh, throw in their parts drawer. Like, that's that's it. They're going to go buy another one. That's what I did. Like, I did that seven times. And then I finally started working with a couple of resu- or a couple of uh, suppliers overseas um, where we get stuff. And I started asking them, like, hey, can you get me these? Can you get me these? Can you get me these? And they'll come back and they're like, okay, well, here's like your grade C, your grade B, and your grade A. And I sell grade A parts. Your grade B and C, you're going to pay less for, but the quality is worse and it's less consistent. And for me, um, in terms of getting customers good quality parts and having less issues on it parts, I'm going to pay more and get the grade A parts because I know they're better quality and they're more consistent in their better quality. So, you know, that's, that's just kind of the stuff I go through. And like when I'm getting a new product, the process is I order about a dozen of them. Um, I'll send them out to like tour. I'll send them out to friends of mine. I'll be like, here, who wants to try this out? But you've got to give me feedback. Let me know what broke. Let me know what was crap on it. Let me know what you liked about it. Like, are there issues? And then after we test them for a couple months, we, we circle back and go, okay, this is what we're thinking about selling it for. What issues did you have? Is this something that was just for this particular product? Is it a design flaw? That kind of stuff. So it's it's figuring out the balance between good quality and getting your pricing right and making sure your customers are getting what they're being told they're getting, you know? And I'm I'm rambling again. I'm, I'm setting up the Discord right now. I'll put a button on the site tomorrow. I'm going to post a link in here. Um... What should I call this? TH3D chat? I don't know. Should I put it something witty? What do you guys think? Give me some ideas for the Discord. All right, we'll keep it simple. We can always revise it later if I want to make it something witty. All right, TH3D Studio invite. I can invite friends. Oh, that's kind of cool. Apparently, I got friends on Discord. I had to, I had to re-log in. All right, let's see here. Voice is connected. That's... I don't know how I'm using my microphone. Um, invite people. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna never expire. Maximum number of uses none. Okay. All right. I got a link here. And I'm going to forward, I'm going to create a DNS scene or a DNS name on our site. So when you go to discord.th3dstudio.com, it will then redirect to that, which will take you to our Discord. Um, like, I like engaging with the community uh, for the most part. Um, you know, and actually a lot of the part. Uh, because the people that are problem people, I just don't engage with them anymore. Um, and I f- spend time with the people that are, you know, decent human beings. Because um, it's not worth it at all to uh, waste time with the people that are just a pain in the ass. All right, I'm setting up the redirect there. There we go. Bam. Discord.th3dstudio.com has been created. The DNS is propagating. There we go. So hopefully that link will work for a while. Um, I said it's never expired, so it should should work. Um, I'll create some rooms and stuff in there. 
And uh, yeah, Kill Switch, I see you're in there, Tor. And Leonidas. So there we go. Oh, there you go, Dan. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, five minutes. You guys got me for five minutes. I'm going to sign off and I'm going to go probably take some melatonin and uh, pass out and hopefully sleep. I want to get at least six hours of sleep. Let's see, should I, uh, can I make Tor a mod? I mean, he is one of our contractors slash reps, whatever you want to call. Roles, okay, let's see. Need help with permissions. All right, let me, let me see here. All right. I can't read from this far away. <laughs> What's a Max 7219? I've heard of that. I don't know what that is though off the top of my head. All right, there we go. TH3D mod. Save changes. Uh, members. There we go. Oh, okay. That's why I've heard about it. Yeah, dude, that's gonna be awesome. Um, I love LED projects. I need to create an AFK channel here. Uh, edit channel permissions. server settings all right guys i'm gonna wrap this stream up i'm gonna play around the discord and i'll uh i'll be hanging out on there i'll put it on the uh, website too and the put it on our facebook and stuff so hopefully i'll see people in there that'd be cool um there we go afk channel we're gonna do a 15 minute time out there all right there we go Alrighty, everybody. Um, 
I'm not going to do any spiel, but uh, I will say, uh, if you want to give someone money, go ahead and give Scott with the Marlin team some money over on Patreon. We support him as well as Gina with Octoprint. Um, you can look up, he's patreon.com slash thinkyhead. And yeah, that's all I'm, uh, I'm going to say. You guys know our website if you want to check out some cool stuff. We got parts, we got kits, we got tons of stuff. Um, so if you want some upgrades for your printers, check out our website at th3dstudio.com. Um, I'm sorry this. I'm sorry we didn't get the original build done. Um, this little thing surprised me, though. I am going to keep running it through its paces, and then I'll post a follow-up on it once I've done, I don't know, let's say three, 400 hours of prints on it and see if it's still performing um, as it is now. So anyways, I'm going to wrap this stream up. Thank you for stopping by. And uh, get some sleep, guys. I know I am. <laughs>